Now that we have educated ourselves about the differences between money and currency, let's investigate how the mechanics of currency works. People are using currency most every day of their lives, transacting value for value. How many people have asked the question about the origin of money, where it comes from, and who controls its issue? Do people realize the powers who control the issue of currency are operating a gigantic Ponzi scheme? People have come to accept that inflation is a fact of life and never question why an item costing a nickel 50 years ago has a price of one dollar today. More than ever, families are under financial constraints living from paycheck to paycheck because the value of their currency is constantly being diminished. The powers controlling the purse continue to bleed people dry with their scheme. Understanding the mechanics of currency is not overly complex. Politicians who promise more free stuff must come up with more currency not caring if something real is backing it in order to deliver on their promises. Political promises drive the need for more currency. Politics is controlled by currency and this control is what creates a debt-ridden government. Spending more than what you have is known as deficit spending and the debt created from deficit spending is what puts the creation of currency on a never-ending path to worthlessness. The government has the power of the purse with the production of currency by creating treasury bonds. From thin air, the treasury creates authorized IOU paper known as a treasury bond or treasury note to pay for the currency. What is backing the bond is fiat paper. These bonds are glorified paper or digits sold by the Treasury at auctions to mega banks who in turn sell them to bondholders with the banks taking a piece of the pie each time they are sold. In the cartoon Popeye, Wimpy says he would gladly pay in the future for a hamburger today. The same is done with bonds with the hamburger representing currency. In other words, if you give me currency today I'll pay you some form of currency in the future. The bondholder is told they will receive payment sometime in the distant future for today's currency. There is a question as to what the currency will be and what value it will have when the payment comes due. This is why many are saying the biggest financial bubble is the bond bubble. What is being used to pay for the bond debt in the future is fiat currency previously created using the same repetitive mechanics. Essentially, paper and digits are constantly being rolled over in a shell game with new bonds in order to increase the supply of currency. This continual rollover increases the size of the national debt, eventually causing the currency to become worthless. The parties in these swaps include the Treasury, Mega Banks, and the Fed. Mega banks and the Fed are the parties in the middle of the bond transfers swapping IOUs through a mechanism known as open market operations. Every time a transfer takes place, the banks take a portion for their own coffers to be used for big paydays for those running the operations. This is why currency of the past is worth less today than it was previously. With fiat paper pushers as middlemen, constantly transferring IOUs and taking a piece of the pie for themselves, the value of the currency becomes inflated and eventually falls to worthlessness. The continual issuing of these government bonds causes future generations to be debt slaves through increased taxation. The treasury bonds being created are the national debt that will be passed on to future generations. The Fed uses its Federal Reserve note to purchase government bonds from the banks and the banks use it as currency to make loans and purchase more government bonds to sell in through open market operations. Recently, the Fed has been the biggest purchaser of the Treasury bonds using their empty checkbook having a zero balance. The check is nothing more than another IOU the banks receive from the Fed to create more currency. This currency is used to make loans and purchase more IOU bonds. 
What we have here is nothing more than a shell game, swapping IOUs. The Fed charges the Treasury for creating their debt instrument, which is to be used by the banks to loan to the public. Essentially, the Fed and Treasury are exchanging IOUs, having no intrinsic value with each other, adding to the devaluation of the currency. Today, countries having large amounts of U.S. Treasuries are selling them at discounted prices. It appears the only party with an interest in repurchasing these Treasury bonds is the U.S. Fed. The Fed is purchasing the bonds using inflated currency, causing any wealth held in the form of U.S. assets to further lose value. This further devaluation of the U.S. currency will eventually accelerate inflation. Ironically, a warning of monumental inflation is coming from the members of the Fed and other central bank insiders. As discussed earlier, inflation will greatly depreciate any wealth held in the form of many paper assets, primarily one's currency. The question to be considered is, how to best preserve one's present wealth.